These intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs, and submarine-launched ballistic missiles, SLBMs, are both strategic weapons capable of delivering devastating payloads over vast distances. But with the mobility of submarines, some might wonder, why do we even need ICBMs anymore? And what is the advantage of having an ICBM if the SLBM can be deployed from anywhere? Firstly, the United States ICBM has around 450 silos that can launch missiles and SLBMs around 288 Trident II missiles on 14 Ohio-class submarines. Russia alone has ICBMs and SLBMs combined, limited by the New START Treaty, to 540 launchers with deployed missiles, and China is estimated to have around 201 launchers, ICBM and SLBM. But these are all estimates based on publicly available information. And it is possible that Russia would have more if there was no nuclear arms control. To find out the reasons why ICBM is needed, we have to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of having SLBM. Submarine-launched ballistic missiles SLBMs, launched from submarines allow for a greater chance of survival from a first strike, giving the commander a second strike capability. Because of its low detectability, quick mobility and concealment, SLBMs are almost invulnerable at sea. Also submarines can operate anywhere in the oceans, giving them the ability to launch attacks from any direction, making defenses more complex for an enemy. An SLBM is the most difficult to get accurate targeting for as it requires a precise geographical fix on a target. As for the disadvantages of using these submarines, an attack on an SLBM could be from the work of uncertainty. They can be destroyed through purposeful fruition or operational accidents. These events would create confusion about whether or not this was a deliberate attack and if we, compared to ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles, launching an SLBM takes longer. Submarines may need to maneuver or surface before launch, potentially increasing vulnerability during a tense situation. And the most crucial thing is high maintenance costs. Building a nuclear submarine is the most expensive part of the equation, plus the missiles themselves are also incredibly expensive. Not to mention the cost of maintaining nuclear submarines is another ongoing expense. As an illustration, figures are estimates, submarines cost $10 billion to $30 billion depending on class and capabilities, and missiles cost $50 million to $500 million depending on complexity and range. It's important to remember that these are ballpark figures. The actual cost can vary depending on specific designs, technologies employed, and economies of scale. Spread over time. The high cost of submarines and missiles is typically spread out over the lifespan of the program, making it less impactful year to year. Indirect costs, security measures, training, and infrastructure for supporting these systems also contribute to the overall cost. Strategic importance. While undeniably expensive, SLBMs are viewed by some as a necessary cost for national security and deterrence. So this is why ICBM is important to cover the shortcomings of SLBM. The ICBMs that are land-based and deployed in hardened and dispersed silos, making them difficult to target and destroy in a preemptive strike. They are spread across a large geographical area, reducing the effectiveness of a single attack, and can be fired much quicker than SLBMs. Submarines may need to maneuver or surface before launch, adding valuable time to the launch sequence, which might be crucial in a fast-paced conflict. While both systems are expensive, maintaining a fleet of submarines adds significant operational costs compared to fixed, land-based silos for ICBMs. For you to know the cost per delivery vehicle for US ICBMs is approximately one quarter of what it is for bombers and submarines. The ICBM also has potential for conventional missions because some ICBMs are being adapted to carry conventional warheads for high-precision, non-nuclear strategic strikes. SLBMs are primarily designed for nuclear deterrence. However, it's important to consider that international arms control treaties may limit the number of deployed ICBM launchers, and with SLBMs might offer a way to maintain a strong deterrent force within these constraints. So a question arises, why both? Why not just rely on SLBMs? Just simple, a multi-layer defense. Having a dual launch capability makes a nation's deterrence less susceptible to being neutralized by an enemy taking out one launch platform. International arms control treaties may limit the number of deployed launchers of a specific type. 
ICBMs and SLBMs provide options within these constraints, and the visible presence of land-based ICBMs can serve as a potent symbol of a nation's military might. In conclusion, both ICBMs and SLBMs play vital roles in a nation's strategic arsenal. While SLBMs offer stealth and survivability, ICBMs provide faster launch times, silo protection, and the potential for non-nuclear applications. Maintaining a robust force of both ensures a strong and multifaceted deterrent.